All right, my beautiful brothers and sisters, welcome to part two. I can't believe I'm doing a two-part series, an introduction for my good morning YouTube, but it's very important. So I'm going to have at the end of this video, I'm going to do this video very quickly. I'm going to talk loud, some very, very special announcements for this weekend. So don't go away. Grab some more coffee. I love coffee. I've always drank coffee. I'm kind of was a rumor going around. Uh, growing up, that when I was a baby, I had coffee in my bottle. I don't think that's true, but I wouldn't doubt it, because we we are a coffee drinking family. We grew up uh, kind of. Uh, we were not wealthy. We were not rich. We were poor growing up, and we had a lot of love. We I I grew up in a strong Christian uh, household, raised by my grandmother. And we gave thanks before we broke bread. We sat down as a family to supper. We went to church. Uh, I can remember being in a hurry, putting, what do they used to call it back then? Brill cream, greasing up my hair, getting ready in my little suit to go to church, shining. My shoes had to be shined, and we gave God all the glory, and that's what I'm going to do. But I like coffee. I'm not imitating or copying anyone. This is me. I have always been a coffee drinker and yesterday as you know um, I celebrated the memory of my brother's life it was his birthday and we always no matter where we were let me explain something to you no matter where we were and uh, where life took us and how far apart uh, of a distance every morning every morning his car would pull up to my door, even though I, I'm, I'm moved away and I have a family of my own, and he'd come up the porch and we'd have our coffee. I want to have my coffee in memory of my brother with you. But that's who I am, and I'm not trying to be anyone else. Now, in part two, I am going to make this announcement. I am done trying, I am totally finished, done trying to help and trying to warn the church of the times we're in and not to get caught up in the ways of the world. You're going to come here and you're going to hear the truth. I'm going to present, I always provide a link to the articles. I use Screencast-O-Matic where I capture the screenshot of the article so you can read the article along with me. I do my best to do my research. I'm not perfect. Not by a long shot, but I try to expose when something is wrong. And when I do, when I go, my brothers and sisters, how does this look to the non-believer or the ones that are maybe getting ready to accept Jesus into their heart and they see Christians attacking? I, I come under attack because I'm from the very ones I'm trying to defend, so I'm totally done. Now, where you are today is where... Your Father in Heaven, Yahweh, wants you to be and has placed you. That's where you are. You need to open the living word if you want to come out and come to the truth. To find the truth, go. don't listen to me, don't listen to anyone. Open the scriptures and go to that secret place and your Father in Heaven will reveal the truth to you. If not, stay where you are because maybe that's where... Uh, Maybe that's where Yahweh wants you to be, and I can't just dive in and pull you out of the mess. You're going to have to do that for yourself. You're going to come here. You're going to find the truth. I'm really tired of my brothers and sisters attacking me for trying to show them. You're going to come out of this. Come out of all this gloom and doom and this hype. All right. So I am totally finished. You want to come here? I don't care about you. It's not about how many views I get. I won't sensationalize. A news article or this channel to put the spotlight on me it's not about me it's all about him and I will give my father in heaven all the glory it's all about him it's all about the bridegroom it's nothing to do with me I'm nobody I'm nothing but filthy rags I'm just filthy rags that Yahweh decided to use me to use me as a voice piece to bring out his truth his living word all right Let's take a look at what's going on in the world today, real quick. Wow, this is the first I've never made a, a two-part introduction. Okay, what's going on in the world today? Let's take a quick look. New threat pushes diplomats out of 
Pakistan, the State Department says terror groups uh, pose a threat to all Americans in the country. What else is going on? Drone wars escalate in Yemen. What else is happening? U.S. Russia leaders meet after Obama cancels meeting. What's happening? A man charged with murder after chilling Facebook posts. I don't even want to talk about this. He put pictures of his wife's dead body on Facebook. Kidnap suspect may have explosive. Police say evidence in the rubble of a burned home indicates DiMaggio may have booby-trapped his car after killing a woman and kidnapping her teen daughter. Gloom and doom. That's what you want here. Listen. Airline, uh, airlines crew kidnapped in Lebanon. Officials say the Turkish Airlines crew was seized while traveling from Beirut airport to a hotel. Marking the dead at Fort Hood Rampage. More gloom this morning. Oh, I'm getting upset to my stomach. A, a soldier testified at Hassan's trial. She wrote a D on the foreheads of the people she couldn't save. Thirteen people were killed. Death and destruction wins. The wind fuels another western wildfire. The blaze in a rugged southern California mountain range has spread to 22 square miles. This has to be Bible prophecy, everyone. Who would have ever thought? Who could have ever even uh, had an inclination that there would be wildfires in California? It has to be. Am I a prophet? Lucky Powerball pool in New Jersey. They're gambling and there's people... Who Winning the Powerball, 16 garage workers hold one of the three winning tickets. Do you think they're going to give it to a homeless people? For the 12th time, boy or girl, in Michigan, oh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. A Michigan family welcomed their 12th son to go through tribulation. I don't know. Uh, Mom, Terry, uh, says her husband would still love a girl if we haven't closed that door and more babies. I don't know, everyone. There's your gloom and doom for the day. Special announcements. This weekend, I will be at the kickoff of the Back to the Bricks. Some Bibles on the Bricks, my ministry. We are out in force, and we are preaching the word to the lost, the forgotten, the homeless, the sinner, the alcoholics, the, those that abuse drugs, the prostitutes, and they are coming over and to salvation. I, a lot of people have to how, how come you don't give a tally how many people got saved from your YouTube channel or your ministry? Because that's not for me to do. That is wrong. That is wrong to do that. Only God, only Yahweh knows who truly did come to salvation through this ministry. He knows their heart and, the, and their intent if it was sincere. I don't know that. I can't put a tally up and glorify me. Look at me. Look at me, because of me, all these people got saved. It's not because of me, it's all because of him. There's your truth. That's why you will never hear a tally of how many came to salvation through my ministry. Because I don't know if they were sincere or not. I, I do my best to follow up on them. Saturday, I will be at Dancing in the Streets, the tune-up party for Back to the Bricks, handing out Bibles and food and water with my ministry. Saturday night at Tiny Chat, 7 o'clock p.m., Doug Ames will be taken over the helm for me. Stay tuned, the very next video. Something I've seen, something is happening to the seasons. We are out of season. Something is happening to the sun. You don't want to miss what's coming up next. Oh, by the way.